In this tutorial, we're going to look at the user interface for Adobe Premiere CS5. When opening Premiere, the first thing that you see is this splash screen with various options. I can choose to open a recent project, create a new project, open a different project, or get help. I'm going to choose New Project. This next screen is filled with options which reflect this application's more professional approach. However, for my purposes, I'm going to leave them well alone. You do need to take note of the location option where you can specify the location for your new project and the name option. I'm going to change the name of my project here now. After clicking OK, this next box allows me to select some preset project settings. From experience, I know that the preset I want is to be found in the Digital SLR folder under 1080p and then DSLR 1080p25. I can choose to rename this sequence here, but I'll keep it at default for now and then I'll click OK. Here we are in the Premiere user interface. This interface is made up of several panels. The first of these is the Project Browser. Down here is where all the sequences and clips will be stored for our project. I'm going to import some video clips now, and I'll do this by right-clicking in the empty space and selecting Import. I'll choose some video clips that I like, and then select them. I'll click Open to import these. The clips have imported into the project browser over here. You can see the video clips are noted by these icons on the left, whereas a sequence has a different icon. This area can get quite messy with lots of different files, so I'm going to create a bin or folder. I'll right click and select New Bin, and I can give it a name here, so I'll call it Clips. Then I'll select and move all my clips into that bin. This helps to keep things much better organised as your project grows. The next panel is the Source Video panel. It's blank at the moment, but if I double click one of my clips, it will open in the Source panel. This is where we can get some fine control of the clip. We can play the clip, or we can stop it, and then skip back some frames, or forward some frames. We also have a shuttle control for quickly scrubbing around the clip. We can also grab the playhead, which is this blue icon here, and move that around anywhere in the clip's duration. The source video panel also has other tabs at the top. One very useful one can be the audio mixer, where we can control various parameters of the audio in our project. I'm now going to put my first clip in my timeline by dragging it down and releasing it. It's there in the timeline now, but it's quite small. I can zoom the timeline by using these controls down here. By default, the timeline is made up of three video tracks and three audio tracks, plus the master audio track. My clip just needs one track of each. You'll probably notice that the program panel has sprung to life. This panel directly reflects exactly what's going on in our timeline. We have some play controls here where we can control the timeline playback, play, stop, etc. I can also come down to the timeline and drag the playhead around as before. You'll see that this will be reflected in the program panel. While the timeline is playing, you can also see the audio levels here. They're quite quiet at the moment, as there's not much audio in this clip. Below those is the Tool panel, which contains some useful tools for selecting or cutting and trimming our clips. Now I'm going to put a few more clips into the timeline. If I drag this one down, can you see that if I butt it up against the previous clip, you get these little white flags appearing? These show that it's perfectly positioned next to that first clip, with no gaps. I'll just pull it away and push it back again. You can see that it has a kind of magnetic snapping effect. 
The final panel of importance is this effect panel down here. From here we can choose a range of effects and transitions. I want to find a dissolve transition here. Cross dissolves are very effective and commonly used. I want to drag this over to the edit point between my two clips. When I do this, a shadow appears over the edit point. If I let go, it becomes permanent. I'll just zoom the timeline a little more. So here you can see my first clip, my second clip, and the cross dissolve in the middle. I'd like to play through this here, but I've spotted something which is warning me that it won't play properly. This yellow and this red bar are telling me that the video is not rendered properly, and it won't play. I can get around this by rendering the work area. I go to Sequence, Render Entire Work Area. It quickly renders and then we can play the video. You'll note that the red and yellow bars have gone green, which means that it will play fine. So let's just play it through again. There we have a simple edit in Premiere. Why don't you have a go? Thank <laughs> you.